Hello, everyone, and I apologize for the first technical difficulties we experienced, but I do want you to know this recording, the recording of the second take of this session will be uploaded, um, and certainly I will not dock points for those who were not able to join, so I apologize. Um, I am also 10 minutes later than I expected to start, uh, only because of the technical difficulties. We will flex. We will change the process if we need to, or we will figure out how to make this work one way or another. I do apologize for the inconvenience. The one thing I do want to say is that um, I will be, I have already posted the slides as well as the link to this recording on the page for you to be able to access to use. Um, I'm going to be covering in these sessions as much of the information as you need for the your papers and the quizzes, and I'm expecting that these will be beneficial to you to be able to use to help you with your homework as well as your uh, assignments and quizzes. So just a very quick uh, information about myself. My contact information is on the slide here. I'm very... Uh, very quick to respond to emails. The last two days, I've received a lot from the class, and I've been uh, trying to keep up with it. I do have an expectation that the, the number of emails will start to go down a little bit, but I will be answering all of your emails within 24 hours. Um, so please use the email or the course space is the preferred, but the email or my phone number, if you need to reach me, is 206-406-8839. Now, I do work at the Sheraton Seattle Hotel. I've been with Starwood for 25 years, um, so I say that I work at, this, at the Sheraton Seattle Hotel only to let you know that I will not be able to respond immediately during the workday, but I will certainly get back to you very quickly. Um, so again, just a little bit about myself. I want you to understand that my degree is both my bachelor's as well as my master of business administration degrees were both earned online, and so I know what you're experiencing as an online student, and I want you to feel comfortable um, with the environment that we are going to be in together in this session. Um, and so with that, I do know that there are some technical hurdles for us to, uh, to clear together uh, in terms of the material itself, but we will be doing it in a little more. Um, and I want you to feel comfortable, too, knowing that I will be in the workspace or in the course space frequently. I'll be monitoring the discussions. I'll be responding. I'll be involved. But it's most important for all of you to be involved. It's your, your engagement in the process that will really enrich your learning. Another thing about myself is I have uh, 25 uh, years in the hotel business, as I alluded to. And so I'm going to bring that experience to uh, benefit all of you in this course, is my plan. So I would like to start by just talking about what we're going to talk about this week, which is the uh, first assignment is for you to upload a photo of yourself and do an introductory post. I know that many of you have already done that, which is great. Um, but it's really these discussion forums on a weekly basis, which will be in the weekly section of Moodle. Uh, so go to the forums on the weekly sessions. And you can, at that, uh, in those forums, uh, post your comments and your, uh, your assignments, your instructions for your assignments will be posted by me each week. So you'll have that information, uh, but your threaded discussion of these topics is critical. Uh, and so I want you to post an original post each week and reply to at least two. You're not limited to two, but two is the expectation. We're going to be talking in the course overview sense of the course content. Um, there's a syllabus and schedule that were uploaded to Moodle. That's important for all of you to download, and I've noticed that you, many of you have uh, already done that, so that's great. Um, please go through those materials uh, in a, in a, take an opportunity to go through them in detail and understand the due dates and the expectations for the course. Um, the textbook, I know that there has been challenges with understanding the text because there's a lot of quizzes and other assignments and exercises that you can do in the quiz, in the textbook. And I want you, I want to encourage you to do all of the pre-tests, the post-tests, and the activities um, to the point that you feel comfortable. You are not being graded on these within the textbook environment. So when you log into 
the hospitality uh, Schwanger and uh, Harbor and Schwanger Schwanger uh, textbook. Those quizzes that you do there will not be part of your grade, but they will help you to better understand the material. So I encourage you to do those quizzes as you're able to. The course space itself is Moodle, and um, I'm hoping that you feel comfortable with it. Please make sure to spend some time logging in, making sure you're familiar with it, and having the opportunity to uh, to ask any questions that you may have. The other point I want to make here about the online learning strategy is you really need to um, find the environment that makes the best possible location for you to learn in. And so with that, I mean, you may, uh, the best thing for you to do is log in daily, check your email, um, really focus on uh, setting a schedule for yourself and Keeping that schedule, I feel, is a great way for you to be successful with the course. I've outlined the, the due dates and the expectations in the course materials, um, but certainly setting a schedule that works for yourself. It's an online course, so you're able to access it when it is convenient for you, um, but you will probably be more successful if you have a, a set schedule. The um, and sorry, one last thing before I get into the lecture. Uh, the, the thing that I would expect is that you all log into Moodle daily, that you check your email daily, and that you really focus on the tone of your posts and maintain professionalism. As you're posting these comments to your fellow students, remember that these are, uh, that sometimes the interpretation of a written message is not the same as a face to face or a verbal message. So it would be uh, important to remind everyone to just reread your post and make sure that it makes sense and that it's not coming across in, a, in any tone that was unintended. All right, so we're going to also um, each week have this lecture. This week I'm talking a lot about the course space itself. In the future weeks, we will just be talking about the lecture itself primarily. I will have uh, weekly updates and reminders and things to keep uh, to keep in mind for you, but uh, the lecture today is about the history of tourism, and we'll get started on that in a few minutes. So, live session participation. Obviously, I have failed you all there. <laughs> if the technology doesn't work where I can have you participating live, I can't hold you accountable for that. So, we have the recording of the playback, which I will send out to all of you and post in the course space. Um, like I said at the very beginning, we'll make this work, we'll figure out what we need to do differently, and uh, so don't feel that you are, don't get stressed out that you missed this live session because of my technical difficulties, all right? Um, what I do expect, though, is if we do go down the road of having these recorded sessions for you to view, I really need you to make sure that you're um, viewing it. And then, most importantly, that you are posting your responses on the lecture itself in the forums. Uh, that's important for you to, for me to be able to, to know that you're absorbing the material that we're talking about. But it's important for you to share your own experiences, to, uh, to bring up topics that the lecture reminds you of in your jobs. Many of you, as I've seen in your introductory, introductory posts, have jobs in the hospitality industry already. So that's great. You have lessons to share with the other students, so please do. The weekly class discussions are the same. Um, the, you know, with around 300 words, I'm not going to count the words. I really am going to look at content and making sure that you have the, uh, the concepts correctly. Um, you know, my expectation is that you, that you really get involved in posts. Uh, reply to at least two students, but I would suggest that you would want to read all of them and post more than two responses if you're able to. There are also some netiquette tips um, that I've included in the course content. I know there's a lot of material there, but there is a link to a netiquette tips uh, that in the syllabus that should help you to uh, in consideration of posting comments. So then the next
thing that we're going to talk about is the written papers. There are three. Two of them are short papers. One is your final project. Um, and so the two short papers in weeks three and five should be around 500 words. Again, I'm not going to stress about the, the – I'm not going to ask you to get stressed about the word count. Um, but I do want to make sure that you have a substantial topic covered in the papers. Just like the discussion forums, I will be giving you the topics to talk about, but I'm not going to limit you to those topics. Um, if there's other examples that you would like to talk about in the papers, you can in those two short papers. I would. Uh, it's important that you follow these instructions, though. I'm going to ask you in the forum, in the written paper forum, to post your paper, and then we're going to have team members. Um, so each of you will be paired up, we're in threes, and you will submit your paper to your team in this discussion forum. Then each of you will need to review your other team members' papers and provide feedback to them by Friday. Again, the important thing here is to be involved and to share your thoughts to help your fellow students improve their papers as well as to make sure that you're learning from their, uh, from the information that they're sharing. There are detailed rubrics for each of these uh, assignments, so for the written papers as well as the discussion posts, um, and I would ask that you look at those rubrics to understand what my expectations are. Uh, but the two short papers, once you've written them and your team members have provided you feedback, you've made changes, then you're required to submit a final paper into the assignment section on Moodle so that I can grade that paper. And that is done individually. But so at a, at a high level, the overview here is you're going to write a paper, you're going to get feedback on it from your team members, you're going to provide feedback to them, then you're going to take that feedback, you're going to refine your paper, and you're going to submit it. Simple as that. The final uh, report says here a book report. It doesn't have to be a book report. There's also videos. I would encourage you to, if you have another um, source of information that you feel that you could write a substantial paper, about 750 words on, um, I would encourage you to think about that. This does not have to be a Word document, written paper. I'm not looking for that. It can be, but it can also be a, uh, you can do a multimedia presentation. You can create a website. You can have a online um, online presentation that you do using screencastomatic.com, which I can tell you more about if you're interested in. Um, but all of these things are open to you to have your final presentation. And there, again, is the rubrics that has the information on what we're going to be looking at in terms of the expectations for you to do, what you're going to need to do here. But the, uh, the point for you to do is, Select at the beginning of the course a, a paper to write or a, a book to read or a video to view. Do that and then weave into uh, this writing or this, this project your learnings from the course as it, re as it pertains to the material you're reading. There's also uh, quizzes that we will be doing. They're very short. They are uh, about five questions each. They'll take about 10 minutes, um, and they're pretty straightforward, but those are in weeks four, six, eight, and 10. And then last but not least, I encourage you to look at the last section on Moodle. There's some extra credit that you can do, and we can be very creative there as well. I've given you some suggestions as to who you would want to talk to, um, but if you have other ideas for interviews, people that you may get some of the same information from, please let me know. So our, uh, I've talk, touched on some of these in our syllabus. Uh, there are the, the very detailed learning outcomes that I'm going to ask you to uh, keep in mind as you go through the course. Uh, the course schedule is detailed, and it follows Moodle. And so the, uh, the ask here is for you to have that course schedule, look ahead, understand what your due dates are, and plan accordingly. So this is the textbook that we'll be using, Hospitality, Our Work, Your Opportunity. It is an online text. Um, it's, it's many of you have already uh, done. It is purchased through an access code that you buy online at www.grtep.com. 
um, and you will go into each of these lessons and do the assigned lessons. So in week one, as an example, it is lesson one that you need to go through. Now I can, um, it is an online textbook, so I can see if you accessed it, I can see how long you worked on the projects. I'm not going to grade you on the, on the content itself, but I do expect that all of you are going to be going through the textbook. It's very important for you to read the materials for you to be able to be successful in the class. And so I'm not going to be a big brother looking over your shoulder by any means, but I would ask you to uh, please make sure that you're going through all of your assignments on the, in the text. Now there is a link to the text in Moodle. So I've alluded to some of these online learning strategies, but I would like you to be aware of upcoming due dates. Uh, engage in meaningful dialogue. Respond in a timely manner, especially when you have some of your uh, some of your assignments that you're going to be doing as a team in weeks three and five, especially those papers. You're going to be responding to your uh, to your fellow students, and in if you are delayed in be giving them feedback, they may be delayed in getting their paper due. So please respond in a timely manner to posts. Um, get to know your fellow classmates. The important thing in an online environment is to create a sense of community. And the opportunity for each of you to share your own experiences with one another is one of the most enriching parts of an online course. Last but not least, we want to have fun. Uh, it is important for you to, to spend the time in a manner that is fun for you. Um, so don't take this too seriously. Uh, have an opportunity to learn, and I'm not diminishing the fact that I am very serious about your learning, but it can be done in a way that is also fun. So uh, another thing that is not listed on this slide with online strategies, if you have a question, Contact me. Feel free. It doesn't have to be, um, it, it can be anything. Please contact me if you have any questions. Um, I do want to let you know I commute from Tacoma to Seattle on Monday through Friday, and I'm usually on the road from 6 to 7 a.m. in the morning, and from about 5 p.m. to about 6 p.m. in the evening. Um, and those are really the most productive times that I have. I will be working on the course. Uh, discussions and emails at that time. And so if you ask a question at 9 a.m., as an example, you may not get a response back from me for several hours, um, but I will respond as quickly as I can. But again, the, the most active times for me you'll find in the course space are between 6 a.m. and 7 a.m. and at 5 p.m. to 6 p.m. All right, so we are going to move right into lecture one, which is uh, the same as we we'll see in the textbook for um, the history of the tourism. So the objectives here are to understand the history and interdependent relationships of the segments of tourism, explain the social, economic, cultural, and environmental impacts of tourism, understand the rules of tourism, of tourism promoters, and identify current issues and trends affecting tourism. So the next slide here is right from our text from Harbor and Swanger. Um, and it's an amazing thing to keep in mind that tourism is the world's largest industry. Um, it is an umbrella of different segments. And uh, that includes lodging. So where are people sleeping, right? It's food service. Where do you eat? Transportation. How do you get to the destinations and travel while you're there? And then attractions. What do you do when you're there? And so under this umbrella, there are these different segments of tourism um, that, that make up, again, the largest industry in the world, which is a fascinating reality. So travel and tourism really started in, in prehistory. Um, the room at the inn, you know, the, the proverbial room at the inn uh, and the meal eventually evolved into restaurants, hotels, uh, all of the things that brought people to locations and to together and to travel, um, such as pilgrimages, trade, religious uh, migrations, etc. All of these things um, 
sponsored or drove tourism, drove travel. And as technology changed, of course, and transportation methods changed, um, the, the face of tourism changed as well. Uh, and so we went from horseback and camel caravans to stagecoaches, automobiles, buses, and now, of course, jet planes. And this is a very cool article that I found recently in, um, in the New York Times, and it is about the bellhop uh, robot that the Aloptotomes are using. And this is just a pilot that they're using in one of their Palo Alto films. But the reason I'm showing this is we went from a, a camel caravan to the modern age where a hotel has an electronic robotic bellhop that can deliver to your room your toothpaste and your toothbrush. Um, it is certainly not widespread, but it just emphasizes the fact that tourism continues to evolve and change, and new ideas and new concepts in tourism will continue to evolve as time goes on. And it's really a fascinating industry to work in because of that. So with tourism, uh, impacts on the destination, some of the things to talk about are economic. Um, if you think about the economic impact of tourism, you can think of it as the multiplier effect. And this is discussed in the text. Um, but the multiplier effect basically says that for every dollar that a tourist spends, that creates many more dollars in the economic environment of that community. Uh, so the dollar spent at the restaurant is turned around and generates more spend by the worker who earns the money and the, the owner earns a profit and from the distributor who brings the food to the chef and it really drives the entire economy. Another concept that is discussed in the text is leakage. So if you have a, a company that comes in and sets up a restaurant in your neighborhood, but they take all of the profits back to their corporate headquarters, that's called leakage. That is money that doesn't stay in the local economy. Um, and so that's just another aspect of the economic impact of tourism. Now, cultural is an interesting one, and I've thought a lot about this. And one of the things that I, in recognizing that many of you are from the uh, Mount Vernon area, or at least in uh, the North Puget Sound area, this is something that you can relate to. When we talk about cultural tourism, there's preservation and there's change. And so the if you think about the, the tulip festivals, one of the things that that brings to the environment, to the, to the economic um, to the economy of Mount Vernon and the Skagit Valley is a cultural preservation. The, the tulip farmers um, are preserving a, a tradition and they're preserving a way of life in that it is drawing tourism and tourists to that location and that is maintaining or preserving the cultural aspect of that of the tulip farming. Now change is also a component of this um, and by that it means that when you have tourists you end up bringing change to the area. You bring, you build roads, you build train stations, you build airports, you build ship canals, etc. and those all drive change. There's also social change that comes when tourism um, Tourism has a major social impact on its environment. Uh, when you have a lot of tourists coming to an area, they bring their social social norms to that uh, location. So if you can imagine a, a deserted island or a faraway island with a unique culture, um, you start to fly tourists in wearing flower shirts and lays. Uh, they're going to change the social aspect of that, as well as the cultural, but the social aspect of that destination. And then, of course, environmental, which continues to be a major issue, and we really have um, seen a, a, the greening of the, of the tourist industry in the last few years um, because of the impact that 
tourism has on the environment. And you'll continue, we will continue to see changes there. So a few other things that I'd like to spend some time on are the issues and trends in tourism. Um, one that is a big, is a big thing here for us is the demographic shift. We have uh, with, with our aging baby boomers and our millennials, um, we are going to see changes in our tourism, um, in hospitality, in hotels, restaurants. They need to shift. And there's actually an article in this week's assignment for you to read about how McDonald's is shifting to be able to attract the millennial market. Um, and so the other thing here is um, with the rise of the baby boomers or the aging of the baby boomers, there's going to be a growing number of, of retirement homes that are built. And that's actually a facet of tourism, or if you will, or hospitality, which is the retirement homes. So as the aging baby boomers need a place to, to move when they uh, become aged, they will begin to move into these retirement homes. Um, and then as millennials continue to become a larger and larger uh, part of the, the world's economy, they're changing the tourism face as well by bringing their their likes and dislikes and preferences to the to the attention of the hotel company. Now another thing here is the global rise of the middle class. This is something that is uh, going to change tourism significantly in our lifetimes. Uh, China, India, these huge population centers are for the first time in history, many of them are experiencing this explosive rise of the middle class. What this means is that these huge populations are going to be able to, for the first time in their history, um, they're going to be able to afford to travel and to, to travel near and far. And if you look at the uh, the exploding Chinese outbound market, you can start to understand the impact this is going to have. Uh, there are going to be millions and millions of Chinese travelers potentially that will travel not only to locations in Asia, in Eastern Asia, but also to the United States and to Europe, uh, Africa, and that will make a huge impact on the tourism industry. Um, just as a side note, uh, the hotel company I worked with at Starwood Hotels, we've invested, our com my company has invested a significant amount of time training all of our associates around the world to be able to better prepare for this Chinese uh, outbound tourist market. And that includes training on cultural norms, um, slippers in rooms, tea kettles available, translated menus, all of the things that will make our Chinese travelers more comfortable. And Starwood is not alone. If you do some searches, um, you'll find other hotel companies are doing the same thing. Ecotourism is another area that is continuing to grow. Um, there are many, many, many tour agencies and companies that specialize in ecotourism and that they have uh, a special niche market in ecotourism. There are Costa Rican cruise uh, cruises that spend time aboard the, the cruise uh, the, the boat in these secluded waters, the protected waters, I should say, off of Costa Rica. And then you have day trips that are very minimalistically uh, designed to not make a big impact on the environment that go into the rainforest. Also in Iceland is another area where um, more and more tourism, to, uh, sorry, more and more tourists are traveling to, to be able to experience the, uh, the ecology of that environment. Um, and then the last thing here is the uh, impact that the current geopolitical issues and recent events will have on tourism. And so these are things that you're going to see in your paper, uh, in your newspapers, and on your uh, news on a daily basis. Um, these are things that are going to impact tourism significantly. Um, and so you have the wars in the Middle East that are so unfortunate, but these are going to obviously impact tourism to those locations. You have Ebola. Uh, this is has the potential to have huge impact on travel. 
it, if you can imagine what could happen, God forbid, if Ebola was to spread to a, uh, you know, spread beyond its current uh, area that it's impacted, which is in Western Africa, if it was to to be uh, something that was to spread, be more widespread, you would certainly see a shutdown of a lot of tourist uh, travel. And then cruise ship incidents. Uh, you often hear articles or read articles about uh, people who have contracted contacted contracted disease on cruise ships, um, and those obviously not only have bad PR for those companies, but certainly also uh, drive down tourism. So all of these issues are and trends are continuing to shape tourism as we know it. And make it a career, your career in travel, one of the best opportunities I feel to uh, to to grow in. Uh, and by that I mean there are so many opportunities to to work in different aspects of the tourism industry, from the, as I mentioned, from retirement homes to hotels, restaurants, cruise ships. Um, despite the this slide that makes it look like it's a horrible experience. Um, cruise ships are a great place to, to grow your career, uh, certainly a place uh, that many of you will hopefully have an opportunity to experience not only as a tourist, um, but perhaps someday as a employee. So the first lecture, as I mentioned before, uh, being that it was not a live session, um, is very unfortunate, and I do apologize again. Um, I had built time in for questions and answers, which, as it is, I didn't have an opportunity to uh, have that chance to hear from all of you. So I do apologize. Please note, I will be looking at what I need to do differently next week so that we can have a live session. I know that these sessions work. I just don't know why I was having technical difficulties tonight, um, but I do commit to having a solution here for all of us be able to get together on a weekly basis. So with that, I do want to thank you again for your patience. Thank you for joining or for viewing this online uh, recording of tonight's session. Um, please take the time to put your thoughts down on the discussion forum for this week's lecture so that we can share um, what you are thinking about and what you are taking away from this session and we will talk next week. So thank you, everyone, and have a great evening. Goodbye. I'm Shit.
Sorry, give me a minute. I can't. Sorry, I just had major technical issues on my first thing. So. Give me two minutes and I'll come and 